This is Radio 97. We are talking law. And if you have any questions uh, about the law, I've just been happy to answer them for you. Uh, of course, you can always check her out on YouTube. There's three years worth of the program available to you. Just go to youtube.com and then uh, type in uh, Despina Priala. P-R-I-A-L-A. -A. You'll find three years worth of answers there. You can check that out 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's it. And she's with us once again for segment two this morning. We're talking about duplexes, a case of buyer beware despina. Yep. Because you just had a very interesting case, to say the least, uh, that's come out of Varsity Lakes. Yes, so I had someone uh, referred to me uh, who was in a, a, a real pickle uh, and he'd gone unconditional and then only discovered, and there's a story about, you know, why so late, but he only discovered uh, something that was actually quite material um, to his purchase and, you know, had he discovered it beforehand, he probably wouldn't have gone through. And we're talking about a purchase that's over a million dollars. I think it was 1.3 uh, from memory. So he wasn't a client of ours. Someone else referred him to us because some firms on the coast, the um, the conveyancing firms, the churn and burn, I, I refer to them as, which just do the very <laughs> bare minimum, bare bones, you know, type of work. Um, they don't do anything complicated. So the minute that it gets remotely complicated, um, they might call someone like me and say, oh, can you give some legal advice to this buyer? Because it's not within their scope of, you know, work or ability or skills or something they just don't want to do. So fair enough. I think we do do complicated all the time, it seems these days for clients. And that's fine because we're experts at what we do. But the uh, when you're buying a duplex, be very careful for a number of reasons. Um, you know, uh, for example, people think a duplex is a house. no. A duplex is a duplex, meaning you're next to someone else with a common wall, right? Sometimes you have your own exclusive yard. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you share a driveway with that person. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you share car parks that aren't really allocated to who gets to use what area for parking. And you wouldn't see any, you know, nicely painted, you know, spots of car park one, car park two. You don't see any of that. Uh, a lot of the times duplexes are very casual the way that they've been set up. But um, make no mistake, a duplex is a body corporate. Now, it's a two-lot scheme, and two-lot schemes are very informal compared to a high-rise, but it is a, a body corporate. So, you know, you've got to get insurance cover uh, for the body corporate to cover common areas like public liability um, and other common areas. Um, and you have to understand getting building insurance for your own duplex. But what we want to talk about today is infrastructure. So what happened with this buyer is he discovered when it was really too late, well, it was too late, um, that on the side of his duplex, and this is waterfront, so on the side, there was a very big, large grass area and there was a very small timber deck but he wanted to extend the deck, apparently, and maybe even build a little pool, you know, little plunge pool. Well, all of that, you know, went up in smoke because uh, he then discovered that there was a sewer line. So there was infrastructure running underneath the grass area. It basically took up the majority. So when you have infrastructure running underneath sewer lines or whatever it is, you can't build on top of that. Absolutely not. It's got to remain free and, you know, uninterrupted. So then he said to me, what can I do? Now, um, this was a tricky thing to resolve, which it really couldn't be because it was too late, um, but not tricky for him to have been given the right information from day one. And this is what I want to talk about and get to, um, because there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of tools that should be used by lawyers in law firms that are looking after clients and buying and selling property, and they're not. And, and that could be for a number of factors. One, they're not even aware of it. Two, they're not skilled or they don't have the expertise to deal with um, sales and purchases for clients. Um, and three, you know, a lot of the firms these days, the newer ones have a lot of young people and that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but they're not properly trained and they don't understand what has to be done. And when you're buying property in Queensland, like you said before, Brooke, it is buyer beware. So don't be under this, you know, misconception that, oh, the vendor has to tell me. No, he doesn't. The mm -hmm. agent has to tell me. No, they don't. Um, and maybe they don't even know themselves. You have to do your own searches and inquiries. Do not skimp out on getting someone cheap for $500 conveyance fee, um, who, and that includes your searches. Don't chip out on fees. Do the right, get the right firm who knows what they're doing. Pay for searches. Because when I looked at it, 
I actually discovered inside of 10 minutes that he could have found out about that infrastructure by going on City Maps for the Gold Coast City Council, <laughs> which is free. free it's a yeah. free mapping tool that I've talked about before on the show. You can type in any address, right, and not just for Gold Coast City Council, other councils, they all have these city maps, all these mapping tools they're called, and you can put your address in the property and you can tick all these boxes and discover so much information like infrastructure or, you know, like bushfire hazards, like land slippage. Um, so flood, flood's a big one. So why don't people use this? So when we get contracts day one, we go online, we look at Google Maps, we look at the city map. This is all free, you know, and I've trained my staff so they know this is what we look for. We go on realestate.com. We look at the pictures that the agents posted. What's the agent um, said? How's he described or how has she described the property? You know, so there are lots of things that you can do that's actually free. And then you go and order the searches. And these searches that they he only got after he went unconditional, which was a big no-no, actually showed the infrastructure. And you think, you know, why wasn't these searches given to him before the cooling off period ended, before he went unconditional? And they weren't. And it was just such a big mistake. Yeah. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, you found all this information within about 10 minutes and it is freely available. And you, you've talked about this before. Um, my, just very briefly, why why are these you know, pop up solicitors these oh sorry these these pop up um, conveyances why why is this not part of that service I mean uh, is it because you're paying five hundred bucks I mean you know is it well, I guess it's what you get uh, you get what you pay for you get what you pay for that's number one number two they probably don't even know it's available because they just um, are not trained or they just don't become aware and they don't utilize what's out there and and they haven't been in property for that long and they don't have the experience or expertise we have been in property for decades you need to go to someone um, that is experienced pay a little bit extra not an exorbitant amount we're talking a little bit extra to get that quality advice can make all the difference because it is buy beware you need to make your own searches and inquiries to discover what am I buying? And in a duplex, do not be mistaken about what you are buying. Yes, it's a body corporate. There are certain things that don't have to be disclosed by the vendor um, being in a body corporate as opposed to a house. So, And there's different rights and remedies under your contract, whether it's a body corporate or whether it isn't. So uh, very much uh, make your own inquiries and searches through a very good solicitor who has that experience and who you know can utilize these tools very easily for you. Definitely. Well, thank you so much again, Justina. So nice to have you back for Talking Law. If anyone does want to get in touch with you directly about a question, maybe some legal advice, where can they go? So they can find the office, double five two nine one two nine four, or they can uh, email info at priellalegal.com.au. And yes, I'll be putting this back up on YouTube at the end of the week, uh, like always. And it's great to be back, guys. Amazing. And we'll do it all again next week. Yep. See you then. See you then. Are you confused about legal jargon? Do you need legal advice but don't know where to turn? Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97. Despina, a leading lawyer with over 20 years of experience, will demystify the law and provide practical advice to help you navigate legal issues. Whether it's a family matter, a property dispute, or a business concern, Talking Law has got you covered. Don't miss out on this valuable resource. Tune in to Talking Law with Despina Priala every Thursday morning at 8.30 on Radio 97.